A lot of companies use Excel to capture data. Now, a lot of you have had situations where you gave an Excel sheet like this one, and then you get data that is not in good shape, and you have to spend hours cleaning it to be able to do the analysis. So the solution for this is to use data validation. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you the basics of data validation, and then in the next one, I'm gonna show you more advanced scenarios. So let's start. First of all, we select the cell on which we want to perform data validation. So in this case, I'm gonna select A2. Then you click under data, you click here, and you get this menu. In this menu, you have several options. We're gonna go through them. I just want to show you that there is one called custom. So in this, you can use your own formula to validate the data. But this, we're not gonna look at it in this lesson. So the most used option here is usually the list. So the list is when you create your own drop-down menu. In this case, I have department. So I can hard code this and I can say, I want shoes, comma, hat, comma, and then shirt. Then I say, okay. And if you see here, I have now a drop-down and I have shoes, hat, and shirt. Now this is okay, but the problem with this approach is that it assumes that the list will not change often. And if it changes often, it's better to reference this to cells. To do this, we're just gonna click here again. We're gonna remove this. And then if you see here, I have a small table where I have my departments. So I click on this, I select those, press enter, press OK, and then I get them from cells. So for example, if I change shirt to shirts, you can come here and you can see that I have now shirts. So let's remove this S. Now what happens if I want to add something to this dropdown? So for example, if I write pants here, I go here, you will see that pants did not come. So how do we make the drop down adjust for more data. The first methodology you can do is select pants, press shift, you keep shift pressed, and then with your mouse, you can drag pants up. You have to put it anywhere in between your list. So for example, I can put it here or here. Let's put it here. I just dragged it here. Then I go and I check and my pants are here. Now let's use Ctrl Z and let me show you another way to do this. The other way is to click anywhere inside, right click, insert. We can do shift cell down and then we can write pants in the middle. This will have the same effect. So you can see that pants now is in my list. We do Ctrl Z again. Now these methodologies are okay, but again, you will have sometimes to give this Excel sheet to somebody else and this person might start adding data at the bottom and that can be problematic. So to fix this, we can use something called Excel table concept. So I'm gonna transform this data into an Excel table. To do this, I go to insert and then I do table or control T, you can see it here. Then Excel knows that I have a table with headers I click OK and I have a table. You can see here that the name of the table is table two. So we can call it, for example, DEPT, enter. So now it has another name. And if I reference this, I can say equal, and then I can select the data and I get my departments, right? Now we can take this, let's just copy it. Then we go here, we click on data, data validation, and then instead of this, we paste this. Now this, if I click OK, I'm gonna get an error because Excel does not recognize this. You see, I get an error. To fix this, you can use a formula called indirect. So equal indirect, I open parenthesis, I have double quotation, then we go at the end, double quotation, and then we do close parenthesis, we say OK, and you get first your three items. Now, if I add an item at the bottom, 
expands for example automatically the table has expanded and here also you can see that this has expanded and this will take care of this problem another way you can do this without the indirect formula is using the name manager but I mean I'm not going to show you this because the indirect formula is a very easy one to use and I think you got the concept the other thing that is interesting that I can teach you is that you can put error messages so for example when somebody types something different than your drop down list if you do like this you do enter you can see that you get this error message this value doesn't match the data validation restriction blah 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 now you can customize this if I do cancel I click here on data data validation I have input message and error alert so let's start with input message and I'm gonna say select and then here I can say input department then in my error message I can say you have selected a wrong value so if I say OK you can see that here I have my select input department if I write something wrong enter now I get my customized message after doing this let's select anything we can play with the other ones so here we need to put a sales date but the problem I have is I don't want any salesperson to make a mistake and put a date that is in the future because you cannot make a sale in the future it should be a past date so how do I do this I go to data validation then I go to settings and I have to choose from this the most appropriate one is date and here I can select between equal bigger etc I can say that I want my date to be less than or equal to and then I need today today there is a formula equal today open parenthesis close parenthesis that's today's date and we say okay now if I enter any date let's say that today is the 20th of April if I put 23 April 2022 I get an error but if for example I put 19 the date works so this is how you validate dates quantity quantity cannot be less than zero right so we go we create another validation and we say I want whole number and I want it to be greater than and I type zero so if the quantity is minus 50 I get an error if it's 50 everything is okay then we have a product code so let's assume that the product code is for example between 1000 and 3000 so I can do the same data validation I go to whole number between 1000 and 3000 and I say okay so if I put 4000 it's not gonna take it I can retry 2400 it takes it last I want the salesperson to write some comments and I don't want the comments to be short so I can click on my data validation and I can do text lens and I can say the text length should be greater than for example 10 characters so if I type for example this it's not gonna take it but if I can say this data is great it takes it because it's more than 10 characters the last thing I'm gonna show you before I end this lesson is how to copy paste your data validation because here I already selected things so if I do this it's gonna take the whole data validation as you can see but with the data and I don't want the data in it so what I do is that I select this I do Control C then I select my cells like this and then I go to home paste paste special and then here I have validation so I say okay and now as you can see my data validation is copied to the other cells so I hope you enjoyed this lesson please do let me know in the comment section how you are using data validation and any more complex scenarios so I can address them in future videos